Okay, so it's uh, it's eleven o'clock. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody for uh, uh, coming to uh, the Summer Learning Academy. Uh, thank you for giving up part of your valuable vacation time. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, not compulsory, but it is. Uh, hopefully, you'll get something out of this. Um, I'm, uh, my name is Peter Day. I'm a mathematics coach uh, in the Cape Breton Victoria Regional Center for Education. I enjoy using technology in the classroom. Um, it helps engage students uh, with their learning. Um, today, we are going to be looking at an app called Explain Everything, which I've used over the last uh, year, year and a half, maybe. Um, I do apologize. I'm new, I'm new to the feed loop um, um, platform. so. I'm gonna try, I, I have to do a Google Meet inside of this so that I can share my iPad screen uh, because I want you to actually see how to use this. Um, so I do apologize if the uh, quality gets a little bit um, um, not the best. So uh, a disclaimer just off right off the top, I do not work for Explain Everything. Um, I don't, uh, so I'm just gonna go in there now actually. Um, I, I don't work for Explain Everything. Um, I don't get any monetary compensation, although if there's anybody from Explain Everything that wants to send me free stuff, I will gladly take it. Uh, this is a web, uh, there's there's two actual um, components to this. You can do the web-based one or you can do the, the app. The app is a one-time $20 cost, and then it's on your um, iPad and it's yours. It, it used to be called Explain EDU, but it's now called Explain Everything Basics. They've just updated a bit. Um, the Explain Everything web-based platform is, uh, I think it's $25 a year per teacher. And then after 10, it's uh, $9 per year per student. Um, and the major differences between the two is that um, the, the uh, web-based one, you can do interaction, kind of like if you had a bunch of students join in on a Jamboard. Same idea here. Um, I have a preference for the web-based one, um, but that's uh, that's just me and I'm gonna go, or, sorry, not the web-based one, the, the app, um, and I'm gonna go through that with you right now. So um, there is a link to, to my slideshow and more of a how-to guide, how to use uh, the Explain ADU. So just to show you, when you open up the app, this is what it looks like. Um, I'll actually go right here, down here, we just open up the explain edu and this is what comes up um, you have a new project you can join with a code if someone uh, has shared it or you can share it uh, your own there's some templates some guides some uh, uh, learn with the experts um, so we're going to start by opening a brand new um, show and it's uh, we can do a blank canvas we can do a template um, or we can start with files, and that includes uh, uh, PDF documents, presentations, Google uh, slide presentations or PowerPoint presentations. The templates just have different backgrounds that you can use. I can show you what they look like. There's all different ones there. Um, however, I'm just going to start with a blank canvas, and I'm going to open it up. You cannot see my screen isn't shared. Oh, no. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> How about now? There's about 10 second delay. All right, I'm gonna go right back to here. Um, so just let me know in the chat if you can see it now. Looks, I think you can. So the um, Explain Everything um, um, app, it's, uh, we can do a new project. I'm just gonna click the new project here. And you can see that there's templates or you can upload files, which I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, there's all the different templates. Um, but I'm going to open a blank canvas. So hopefully everybody can see what I'm doing. I know that it's kind of, uh, it's gonna be small. You 
may have to enlarge or whatever, but then you can't see the chat. Anyway, do my best with this. So right off the hop, there's um, over here, I'm just gonna put my uh, pointer on. Over here, we have our toolbar. And up top, we have another toolbar for recordings, projects, adding slides, whatnot. And then over here is to upload and our options. Now, if you go into the options or the settings, I've changed it so that my toolbar is on the right-hand side because I'm left-handed and I put the control bar on the top because um, I don't like it, uh, my hand accidentally hitting things. Um, you can change all kinds of uh, display settings here. I have display on screen taps and gestures just so that you guys can see where I'm tapping. And then there's all kinds of editing things like the size, the resolution, when you record, what you're getting how to integrate it with not just your Google Drive, but if you have a Dropbox or a OneDrive, um, um, we can share it with that. So I'm gonna have a look at the tools over here um, and what all these do. So first of all, here we're gonna insert new. So I can insert a picture, I can take a picture with the iPad, I can insert a video, I can insert a browser, I can scan a document, put in an equation, or I can just put in an audio file. Now, for those of you that are math people, um, there is this that you can put in, um, uh, math, whatever you want. Um, it's like an equation editor. However, if I think if you're drawing, there's probably no need for you to write out something like this. And then you can zoom it right in if you want. Um, we can also insert, like I said, a picture. You can take pictures of things. You can do a little video that you can insert in your slideshow uh, so that it's available later. I can also insert an existing image or video. So these are all things that I've taken uh, pictures of and I can insert them in. So I'm just gonna pick one here. Um, and this right here, I can now crop this image. It's just a screenshot of a textbook. And let's say I only want question eight of it. So I can just crop it in and then I have question eight for this. I can then lock this in place by holding down. So now it's locked so that I can't move it around because if it's unlocked, what can happen? If I unlock it, I can move it except I have to unlock it. I can move it around like this and you don't really want that happening. So if I lock it in place, then it's there. Then I can use the zoom tool if I need to, to zoom in, to do different things, um, manipulate however. So the next one, um, I can insert a file. So I can go from my photos, my Google Drive, from wherever. Now I have this link to my Google Drive, uh, so I can insert um, something like this. This is just a worksheet and I can import it. I don't want all the pages inserted. I only want, um, let's say, page two and page three. And if you can see down here, I've inserted them on separate slides. Um, and then I lock the pages as well. So I insert those and they automatically give me new pages. So right now it's locked. However, I can zoom in on whatever question I wish. And I now have this worksheet. The good thing about this is if you're doing something with angles or, or it doesn't, again, this doesn't have to be mathematics. You could use this in any subject. Actually, I worked with a teacher uh, a few weeks ago um, who's a music teacher who used this program, which was great. I can insert um, a file that I have again. And here I'm going to, insert a protractor, it's a PNG file. What that means is that it's um, um, see-through. So there's the file that I have right there. I can now use this protractor to measure the file or measure the, the angle. And if I want, I can zoom the whole thing in so that I can see it better. Students can do this, no problem. So I just take, and all I'm doing is I'm using my two fingers to move the the uh, protractor 
and I can see that this has an angle. Put my pointer on. I can see that this has an angle of 50 degrees. So students could use this. You could use it while teaching uh, to show on the overhead. Uh, it's great for projecting um, onto the overhead. It's also great for uh, at-home learning. Uh, I had a few teachers that I worked with that used this, and they said it was a lifesaver for them. So I'll continue on with the how-to. I can also put in um, different things. Uh, there's clip art. There's, um, and there's a ton of different clip art that they have available. I'm not going to spend all day going through that, but it's the same, all the emojis, all the different little clip art things that if you wanted to put in. Um, one thing that I will show you to use the other tools, I'm going to import an existing image. And this was just a little um, thing that we did during at-home learning. I meant to put that on a new page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. And I'll put it on a new page. And I'm going to paste it in. So once again, I'm going to lock it in place so that I don't move it around. And so here's a few things that you can do. This is a simple, which one doesn't belong? It's a little take using Star Wars and mathematics, but I wanna show using some of the other tools what you can do with it. So you have a pen tool, um, which you can change the colors quite easily. Um, you can change the width of the uh, pen itself. You can change the pen to a pencil. Um, which gives a scratchier uh, look to it. Um, you can actually do very realistic drawings with these. Uh, I've, I've used it, uh, change the color, change the um, density of the lead. So this would be great for, for art class as well, if you had it. Um, and we can also add in a ruler. So the ruler is great because I can change it, uh, use it here and I can just go along and it draws the line there. Um, I can also change the ruler to whatever angle I want. And I can show you more with that later. Um, but what I do want to do is um, I can use a highlighter tool very simply and change the highlighter color to whatever I want. That's no big deal. The eraser tool right here. Now, if you notice, it only erased the highlighter. If I change it to this, it will also erase the lines that I just created. And here's the crazy thing with this, but I did lock it so it may not work. Yeah. So if I go back to unlock it, I can now erase this document. So if I want to change a few things, I can go in, I can actually erase this picture. Um, it works with PDF documents. It works with, um, um, well, anything. It will erase all of them. So if you have a worksheet that you just want to do a couple quick changes on, you can erase it and then write in whatever you like. So the other thing that we can do here, which I find absolutely amazing, is um, using the fill bucket. So this is, a, this is just a, a, a picture that I uploaded, and normally it doesn't allow you to get into those layers, but I can look at this and I can start adding in color. And those of you who are Star Wars fans. Oh, we can see, uh, you can add it in like that. Um, you can also zoom it in to make it a little bit easier to do these things. And to write on, I can look at this and I can say, well, something times five has to equal that same thing. We know that this is going to be zero times five equals zero. And you can write all over this as you wish. Okay. So the other thing that we can do, I'm going to add a new slide here. I can look at the shapes. So with this, I can change the shapes to 
um, a square, a rectangle, circle, line. So a square, if I go like this and I create it, you see that that dotted line comes in and allows me to know that it's a square, an exact square. I can also change it so that the, the fill color is a different color, not just gray, or I can have it uh, clear. Um, but if I'm to make a circle and I want a perfect circle and not an oval, then I see that the dotted line shows up there. Now this is great for making uh, different uh, manipulatives in class on the fly. Um, if you're teaching mathematics, um, I, it will also do um, um, predict shape. So if I want to draw a triangle, it will predict the shape for me. Uh, this will also shadow. Uh, this is the border width. And then again, we can have all the shapes of different colors. So one thing that's uh, kind of easy to do if you are using, or if you are teaching mathematics, um, I could do something like this. And I want it to be yellow. And I'm going to do rectangle. And I'm going to create this right here. And I want to name this Actually, I'm not going to name anything. I want to copy it. So if I use this tool over here and highlight it, I can duplicate it so that I have the same size one. Now I'm going to go back to my paint can, except this time I want it to be red. So I'm showing the different uh, tiles. Um, so I could say this is positive X. This is negative X. Now, after I put in positive X, I can hit this little check mark right here. And what that does is it now, these are now joined together. So if I want this one to be negative X, I hit the check mark and it's now joined together. I can then duplicate these, use them as I wish. I can create um, all different types of uh, mathematical equations. I could say, you know, represent three X minus two equals one, or if I just represent the expression. So now I need a, now I need a um, plus one and minus one counters. I can see that that's a square and I'm going to duplicate it. So I have the exact same size. I'm just going to grab, put it up here and color this one red. But these are all things that you can do on the fly in front of the class. Um, when you're using them, uh, they, come, they become pretty, uh, pretty easy to use. Um, so while you're doing this, you could be walking around uh, the classroom, um, you know, showing a student live, hey, here's how you do this. So if I wanted to represent three X minus two, um, I need, whoops, I need three of these. So I'm gonna duplicate. I'm gonna go one, two, three. And now I need two negative. So I'm gonna highlight that and then duplicate it. And I see that I've just represented 3x minus 2. Um, so that's the, the shapes. Um, you can add in text, although it's not something that I use very often. This is a neat little tool. It's a, a cutaway tool. So if you have, let's go back here. You have this and you actually want your Boba Fett head here. I can go like this and it instantly makes a duplicate of it. So you can change it and then you can then manipulate this however you want, um, which is kind of neat. The other thing that you can do, and I will show you this, um, if I insert a file, so this is a little baby Yoda, but I don't want all that white background. If I put this in, see the white background? I don't want that. So when I insert it, what I can do is 
I can now hit this button, which will automatically cut away all the background. And now when I apply it and insert it, you notice that it's a PNG file and it doesn't have that background, which is great. By the way, this thing was drawn using this program, um, just using the, the, uh, the fill tools and uh, yeah. Um, so we also have, if I'm going too fast or if there's something else that you want to see, um, I'm, I'm looking over the chat over this way. Um, so, oh, wait, <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah, so if there's anything in the chat that uh, you'd like to see, just let me know. Uh, if there's something that you would like me to try. Uh, this this um, platform is difficult to use because of the 10 second delay and I am trying to uh, normally I do this quite interactive, uh, but it's very difficult when I can't see anyone or hear anyone. So I don't even know if I'm, uh, if I'm broadcasting. So um, the other tools here, um, let's go back here. Uh, this tool right here allows you to delete things. So if I was to um, highlight all those, but I only want one of them, I can click on the one on the part that I want highlighted. That I, so I just want to delete that. But if I delete the wrong thing, of course, there's the undo tool and I can undo it. Um, the other thing that you can do uh, here is the pointer. You can change your pointer to whatever style you want. If you want a laser pointer, and then you can offset that if you wish in the um, function. You can use an arrow. You can even use a lightsaber if you like. Um, so there's all kinds of different things here. Now this tool here, where we select, um, um, this tool right here where we select, we can select different things. So if I'm gonna, let's say I wanna group, actually, let's say I wanna group this together so it's not separate things. So it's already written as one thing. Um, I can duplicate this, I can copy it, I can paste it, I can deselect all. The other neat thing that you can do, and I'll go, back to here so that you can see actually. Let's zoom in here. So this guy here, sorry, this guy here that I picked, I can actually select, oh yeah. Let's go right here. So I can actually select this guy and I can flip it. I can make a, an alternate image. So if you're doing, um, well, if you're doing symmetry, lines of symmetry in mathematics, or I guess in, in art or any other subject, um, that tool is great to use. Um, you can flip it down. You can even set it to rotate on a regular basis, um, which is kind of weird how it does that. And that will just continually spin and make your students throw up maybe, I don't know. Um, let's see. Also, you can arrange things. If I go over to this one right here, let's say I want say I want all of these over here, but I want them all lined up so that they're all even. I can select all of them and then align them to the left. Um, you can do that if you have a bunch of written out uh, lines of work. Um, you could then um, align it all that way. Uh, let's see. We can align it uh, top to bottom, in the middle, whatever you like. You can also bring things forward and backwards because these are layers. So that one's on top of that one. I could bring this one forward 
to the front so that that one's on top. But I have to bring it all forward. Or I could have just hit bring to the front. And then we see how that one's on top. Um, but these are ways that you could use this. Um, the other thing that I want to show you up here is the recording part. So up here, uh, we look right here at the what this is where we name things. So I can name this whatever I want. We could just say um, Summer Learning Academy. And then I do recommend you you naming all of your files because otherwise it's going to say whiteboard one, whiteboard two, whiteboard three. Um, you can do a quick save. Also, you can do the camera frame options. So right here, uh, just because of the way that I hold the iPad, I prefer landscape, but it's entirely up to you how you can um, change it. You can do a portrait view if you like. Um, you can duplicate the whole slide. You can save this as a, a template. The other neat thing is here, here's all the pages that I've worked on so I can jump back and forth very quickly. The other thing that I can do is I can change the background. So right here, I have uh, just a blank canvas. I can change the color background to whatever I want. Um, I tend to stick with the white because it's a whiteboard. Um, you can add in any different colors you like over here on the right hand side. You can have a basic color palette or you can have your extended one. The other thing that you can do is if you are like me and you tend to write sideways um, and you need the lines here, you can actually insert lines. So now when I write, I can actually zoom in a bit and I can write a little bit easier. Instead of writing on an angle, which sometimes I do when I'm on the board, but now that I have the lines, it's no problem. You can also change this so that you have horizontal line, or sorry, uh, vertical lines, or if you need instant grid paper or dot paper, um, you can use that. So if you needed grid paper to do an example, something with a graph, you could draw that quite easily. I actually have a sheet saved if I'm doing graphing. I have a, a, a graph saved that I just insert um, that I can put in. The other thing that you can do is recording. So I'm going to get rid of the background so that you can see it a little bit better. And I can start to record things. So there's, there's my camera view right there. Um, there's all kinds of neat little things that you can do with the camera that you can zoom in the camera. Um, you can highlight specific areas. So you can make it a uh, video recording. This was great for uh, teachers during the at-home learning. They could record this and then just uh, post it on their Google Classroom. And I'm going to show you different things that you can do with that. Now, unfortunately, my mic is, I'm going to turn it off because you're not going to be able to hear anything anyway. Actually, I'll leave it on. I just have it turned down because otherwise we get a feedback loop. Um, so I'm going to record. Uh, let's go all the way back to the very first one. So I'm recording now, but in this example, which equation best describes the graph below? Explain your choice. So I can look at this and I can see that right here, this is a horizontal line where x always equals negative one half. So which one of these would be negative one half? And we would have to solve for, for x in each of them. So I could do this one here, and I can see that x is equal to 2, which would be over here. And I can insert my ruler. So that's not the one that we're looking for. 
right here, I can see that 2x equals a negative 1. I divide by 2, x equals a negative 1 half, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now I could draw the other ones, but we don't need to because this is our answer. So this is the answer that we want. Now, that whole thing was recorded, and I just did it just to um, um, show you guys how easy it is to now go back. And you can see all along the bottom that as I get to places, it shows the action, what's happening. Now, if I play it, you can hear my voice play back, but I think you guys have been hearing my voice too much anyway. Um, Let's say there's some gaps here that I don't want. Let's say I want to take out this gap right here. Well, I select this tool, and I just slide it over, and then I just go, and it just shortens that gap. Um, let's say right here, let's say I get to here, and I wanted to do C as an example instead, of B because B was the correct answer, I can now go up here to mix and click insert. I can now say, I can hit record. So if we look at C, we see that 2Y equals positive one, and then I divide by two on both sides and I get Y equals one half, which would be right here. And I stop the recording and you notice that that's now inserted in the middle. And it's really that simple to, um, to do the examples. Uh, we can add in, we can delete things. Let's say there's a part at the beginning. I'm gonna slide all the way back to the beginning. And let's say I didn't want this intro part. Whatever I'm saying here, I didn't want it. I simply highlight this. And then if I hit the trash can, we now have a few seconds of dead air, but what we can do is highlight this and just drag it right by hitting that button, drag it right to the front. We can also speed it up, which I think is super cool. I've done drawings where um, I've drawn it in real time and then sped it up, which is kind of neat. Um, you simply highlight the spot that you want, and then I can go Let's do it at four times the rate. And then I can play it back. Now you can't hear what I'm saying, but you'll see that the everything is moving much faster. Um, the sound of my voice would sound very Alvin and the Chipmunkish. So I don't know if you recommend that, but it might be neat for showing things quickly. So let's stop that. Um, yeah, you can also zoom in to get it a little bit closer exactly where you want. The editing is actually very easy when using this. So now that all that's said and done, I want to import something or, or sorry, I want to export it. Um, so if I go, if I'm, if I want to export this, uh, video itself, I can go X, uh, uh, export as, and I want this video. So I'm going to export this video and I'm going to put it right in my Google Drive. So it will now um, render the video. Um, normally it doesn't take too long as long as you keep it uh, under a minute or so, but of course the longer it is, the longer it takes. So now I can send this to myself uh, I can put it in whatever folder I want. I'm actually not going to do that because I don't want this video saved. Um, but it just goes right to your Google Drive. The other neat thing that you can do is let's say this is a lesson that I did in class today and I want these as my notes. Um, you know, you have your notes for the day. You can, let's do this. I'm going to um, insert a page here. So this is my first page. Oh, I want this as my first page. So all I do is I go edit. I'm going to select this one. I'm just going to move it over, but 
it's not letting me. There we go. I just select that and move it over. Uh, if I don't want um, this page anymore, say I don't want this page, I just throw it in the trash, delete, and I'm done. So if I go back to my first page, it's a blank page, and I'm going to put my lines in so that my handwriting is a little bit neater. And zoom in a little bit, and I can say um, notes for Thursday, July, what is the date today? July 29th. And I can do my notes however I want it. So I want this uh, saved as a PDF document and upload it. Now, here's the cool thing. Um, I'm going to overwrite that project name. I'm going to upload this as a document. So this is now going to save as a PDF document. I can save it to my drive. Um, now, I know during the school year, we were having difficulties uploading it directly to Google Classroom. That has now been fixed. So if I click on my classroom, I've just finished doing all my notes. It's the end of class. Students are missing or, you know, you want to have students to have their notes at the end of the day. I can go... I'm going to just create material. This is my super awesome test class. And I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to call this notes for um, July 29th. I can add a description. I could add attachment, I can do whatever I want, but I just go post. And it says my upload is a success. So I'm going to go to my Google Classroom. And I go all the way down to the bottom. I upload this class and then new material notes for July 29th. And there are my notes for the entire class to see. So it's a great tool. Uh, not only to keep your students organized, but to keep yourself organized as well. Um, and it's a great way for you to interact with your students. So I've been talking a really long time. <laughs> um, is there any questions? And I do know that there's a 10 second delay, but if there's any questions at all, uh, put them in the chat. If you want me to go over something, uh, re-go over something, I can't. I'll just give you guys a second. Why do I prefer the app? Um, so getting ready for this, um, well, first of all, the cost. It's $20 fee once and that's it. Now the downside to it is, you can't uh, interact the same way that you could. Um, so if you had a class um, set of iPads and uh, stylus, then absolutely, I would uh, I would say, sure, if you can afford all that, then you can do the interactive thing online. Uh, however, the app, it's less glitchy. Um, I try to use the web-based to do this presentation using the web-based because I do have the web-based as, as well. Um, I tried to use a Chromebook and it was very glitchy. It wouldn't let me load PDF sometimes. It wouldn't let me, when I zoomed in, it kind of did this um, in and out uh, where the, the, the picture itself would disappear. I just found it a little bit more frustrating to use. The app, I tend, I'm going to be using it on an iPad anyway, so why not just have the app? Hope that answers your question. So if there aren't any more questions um, and there's nothing, uh, again, this was just dipping our toes in. I know I went through a lot of stuff very quickly. I hope it's helpful. Um, I hope that you guys can use this. Um, I totally recommend it. However, again, the downside, <laughs> you do need a uh, uh, an iPad and a stylus uh, for this. Um, it's a great in-class tool. It's a great, it's great for at-home learning. It's great for blended learning. It's great to uh, um, reach all of your students at any level.
So if there's no further questions, um, I think I'm all finished. I will stick around for a bit if uh, people want to ask me questions, but I'm going to actually stop sharing. If you were using this for class and wanted to show a short video, can you insert it? Absolutely, you can. Yep, uh, you just go into the insert, whether you create it yourself or if you wanna use a YouTube video, a link, you can absolutely use it. Uh, if it's a stream like, like YouTube, you can insert the link. If it's an actual video clip, you can insert it as well. insert image or video. I don't have any videos here, but if you had the video in your, uh, saved on your iPad, or if you had it saved um, on your uh, Google Drive, you can insert it that way. Yes, there is a cost. Um, the cost is $20, a one-time $20 fee for the app itself. Um, for the uh, web-based, it's, uh, I think I said $25 a year per teacher. Um, and then once you get off, once you get more than 10, uh, you can, I think it's $9 per student per year. And I believe that's American money. So it's probably like $2,000 Canadian. Only joking. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for the questions. Um, it's nice to know that I, I am talking to people. I do know that some people will be watching this later. But um, again, uh, thanks for giving up part of your valuable vacation time um, to come to this non-compulsory uh, professional development. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your summer and uh, have a great day. Thank you. <laughs>